Let's start off with chemical safety. To handle chemicals, there are safety rules that need to be followed. When working with any kind of chemical, the use of small containers is strongly recommended for easy control. If any accidents occur, warn the others in your area and contact the teacher. Mixing chemicals should only be done after permission from your teacher is given. It is very dangerous, therefore, before mixing, read and reread labels to ensure you have the appropriate chemicals. Having the proper chemicals is important, as is adding chemicals in the proper order. When combining acid and water, one must remember AA, add acid. Adding acid to water, not vice versa, is very important as when water is added to acid, the acid begins to boil, possibly making the liquid splash out of the beaker. Smelling chemicals is strictly prohibited unless given permission from the adult or teacher in charge. When given permission, refrain from smelling directly over the beaker. Instead, wave your hand over the chemical towards your nose. Next is the Bunsen burner and glass for safety. The Bunsen burner is an open gas flame that ranges to very high temperatures and is one of the primary heat sources in a chemistry lab. Although, if not used properly, there are many dangerous outcomes that may occur. An outlet on the bench provides the gas for the Bunsen burner. A rubber hose is connected to the tip of the outlet and to a similar tip on the Bunsen burner. It is important when connecting to the Bunsen burner to always check for cracks in the hose. The flow of gas is controlled by a valve that is usually found on the bottom of the Bunsen burner. The amount of oxygen in the flame is controlled by air inlets. When using a Bunsen burner, be sure to secure the hose to both the gas valve and the Bunsen burner. To light a Bunsen burner, open the gas valve and use a striker or a match. If using a match, strike away from you, turn the gas on after the match is lit, and light the Bunsen burner from the side. Aim to have a small blue flame with a lighter inner cone since a yellow flame is too cool. This can be adjusted by opening the air holes and letting in more oxygen for combustion. The size of the flame can be adjusted through the valve at the bottom of the Bunsen burner. Turn the gas off immediately if the flame begins to sputter or flare, or if the flame goes out. Escape gas can cause an explosion. Also, turn the gas off if the room smells like gas. Even if the Bunsen burner seems to be working as normal. Before heating glassware, check for any cracks or stars, which are dangerous because they can actually break. Containers with a flat bottom are usually placed on a wire screen on a ring stand. If you need to heat up volatile chemicals, never use a Bunsen burner. This could cause flammable vapors. To heat up a test tube, place it into a beaker with boiling water. This allows the test tube to heat up evenly, as well as prevents it from boiling over. However, the test tube could also be heated directly with the Bunsen burner. Hold the test tube on an angle away from yourself and others. Move it back and forth to heat it up evenly. Next is centrifuge safety. A centrifuge is an object that aids in separating a solid from a liquid. Upon doing this, the solid will fall to the bottom and the liquid will then rise to the top. However, when used improperly, several errors may occur. Before using a centrifuge, make sure the test tubes do not have cracks in them, which would allow the liquid to seep through the cracks. In order to use a centrifuge, a mixture must be put into a test tube with another mixture for the centrifuge to be balanced. If the centrifuge becomes unbalanced, the centrifuge will start vibrating and may vibrate enough to cause it to fall off the work area. Also, a centrifuge should always be given time to stop on its own, as you should never stop it with your hands. Next is dressing and acting safely. Don't wear extremely loose clothing. Fabric should be sturdy and natural. Wear older clothes and a lab apron. Wear long pants or long skirt. Tie up long hair. Remove contact lenses. Avoid wearing makeup. Remove rings and watches. Cover your eyes with goggles and side shields. Keep food and drinks outside. No horseplay. Keep aisles clear. Stand on a step stool if you have to reach.
Next is emergency equipment. Although precautions may be taken to ensure that no mishaps occur, accidents may still happen. And these are the best ways to deal with them. If you've cut yourself, wash out any traces of chemicals with water and make sure there are no pieces of glass in your skin. Then, dry your skin to make sure that when the bandage is placed on, it will stick. When a chemical goes into your eyes, you must go to the eye wash and rinse your eyes out for 15 minutes. When washing your eyes, you must keep your eyes open and moving to ensure that the chemicals wash out of your eyes. However, if you are wearing contacts, you must remove them after giving them a short rinse. After washing your eyes, you must go to an optometrist to see if any damage has occurred to your eyes. If any non-corrosive chemicals come in contact with your skin, wash the area thoroughly. If any corrosive chemicals touch your skin, you must take a shower in the safety shower. Even if you do not feel any pain, it is mandatory to head to the safety shower right away. In order to ensure that the corrosive chemicals have been washed off, you must take off your clothes and stay in the shower for at least 15 minutes. When using a Bunsen burner, if a fire occurs in a small beaker or container, the best solution is to cover the container and to turn off the gas to ensure that the fire will not be able to reignite. However, if a large fire occurs, it should be dealt with by a fire extinguisher, which should be used only by the teacher. To use a fire extinguisher, you must pull the pin, aim the tip towards the base of the fire, squeeze the trigger, then sweep from side to side to extinguish the flame. A mnemonic to remember this is P-A-S-S, -S, PASS. In the case where a fire is too large to contain, everyone must evacuate the room and the fire department must be called. Upon calling them, it is essential to tell the fire brigade which chemicals were involved in the fire. If fire occurs on someone's clothes, the greatest method to be rid of the fire is to go into the safety shower. However, if the safety shower is not close enough, you must stop drop, and roll. The reason why this is an effective method is that the student's body weight will aid in smothering the flame. The rest of the flame will be smothered with the aid of the fire blanket.